Yeah, you are. You're screwing. You're screwing everyone up. Hi everyone, it's Nate Picos with Blambot, and welcome to Lettering Live. Today I have the excellent Volume Two, Number Five, pages seven and eighteen from Marvel Comics, and that's my cat, who will not leave me alone today. But we're just going to roll with it. So this is the last issue of the series. Um, and fun fact, I designed the logo for this comic uh, based on sketches by artist Mike Allred. So page seven is all about intensity and degrees of shouting. Uh, as a letterer, you may get a script that just indicates a character shouting. But are they startled or are they really terrified? Um, you can visually represent this by the... Uh, amount of graphic design you're willing to put into your shouts. And this page in particular has mm, maybe three or four different shouts on it of varying degrees, so I thought it would be a good subject. Um, page 18 is all about fitting dialogue into tight or awkward spaces on a page. Mike Allred likes to draw his panel borders at angles. There's not a lot of 90 degree panel borders on his artwork. Um, and there are a lot of characters who sort of are superimposed over panel borders. So in this case, you'll see me uh, fit some balloons, you know, tuck them under someone's leg or something like that. Uh, and I'll use tricks like uh, butting the balloons against panel borders and clipping masks. Yeah, Ace is a big fan of clipping masks. So, uh, fonts used in The Excellent. For dialogue, I use a font called Triple A, and it's a custom font that I created for Mike Allred many years ago, and unfortunately, it's not for sale or download anywhere. Uh, for shouts, I used Blambastic and Torn Asunder. Um, yeah. And there's, I think, one sound effect on one of these pages, and I use Fight to the Finish for that. As far as brushes on the balloons, typically on the Excellent, I use just a standard calligraphic stroke based in uh, Illustrator's, you know, brushes, pre-programmed brushes. And I do use on page 18, uh, the Cranky Creature brush. Yeah, that I designed uh, and is available on blambot.com. And uh, that's about it. So let's get to it. So here we are in my template, and I'm going to drop the artwork in and lock it down on the art layer. Take a look at the script to refresh my memory. And you can see that the, the biggest shout on the page is going to actually be in the first panel. It's the first bit of lettering. And because I'm going to treat that more like a sound effect, I'm going to save it until the end because you know me, I like to save my sound effects for dessert. So I just copied and pasted a bunch of area type objects where I thought I would approximately need them. And now I'm copying in text from the script. I just changed that word shifty to the bold italic version using character styles. And making some decisions about that balloon. So at the bottom here, we're gonna start getting into some of those shouts. Some of the quieter ones, some of the louder ones. And the best hint I can give you as far as deciding on how intense a shout should be, is to look at the characters' faces. How are their faces drawn? You know, the intensity of their expression is often the best gauge for the intensity of their shout. Changing a placement there. And Marvel generally doesn't provide placements, but even when I do get placements from publishers, I generally make those decisions myself. So this character, um, He's hitting the ground, and I thought his shout would uh, be one of the more interesting ones, one of the more intense ones. So I changed fonts to Blambastic, and uh, I'm adding a little underline there for some, some added visual interest. So I locked my lettering layer, and now I'm copying balloons. You notice my balloons have sort of an organic shape. They're not perfectly round or perfectly oval, because um, sometimes you're your blocks of text aren't very perfectly round. See that one's a little narrower at the top and wider at the bottom. 
And this one's more rectangular. And these two balloons, you'll notice this one here is narrower at the top and wider at the bottom. And the one below it is the opposite. Narrow at the bottom, wide on the top. And I am attaching my tails impermanently so that inevitably when corrections happen, I can unattach the tail from the balloon, make my modifications, and then reattach it. And here I'm doing a little burst at the top of the tail, just another way to uh, differentiate your shouts. And uh, Mirror Girl here, her face is a little more passive, so I don't want to go too crazy on this one. So I just sort of enlarged what she was saying a little bit. And that's just pretty much a standard balloon, but here we have a burst for that oof. And I'm just going to grab one of those points and stretch it out to be the tail. Oops, yeah, there we go. Taking another look at all that. And it's time to do that big shout at the top. Now this is somebody dying off panel that they can hear. So I thought I'd really punch this one up. So I switched fonts. This is a font called Torn Asunder. And now I'm just sort of shifting all these letters around, making it more visually interesting. And in corrections, I think we ended up changing this a little bit. Here, you're gonna see me make a, make, turn it into a balloon, basically, or a shout balloon. And I think in corrections, we just changed it to sort of a sound effect. It wasn't my call. And I'm gonna draw a wiggly tail. Finally get one that I like here. Use my action that turns uh, pencil lines into off-panel tails. Super handy. Saves a lot of time. Oop, my tail was on the wrong layer, so I had to copy and paste it onto the balloons layer. And now I'm going to add a little extra punch to that balloon with that uh, little bit of an extra outline. And I'm just trying to align the points of this burst. But if you don't do this, it just looks a little strange. Check all the points. And now join that tail. Now, the end of that tail looks a little weird. It's not going to matter because we're going to create a clipping mask. And you'll never see it. So I just added the calligraphic stroke to all the balloons on the page. And if you see that little change happen to the stroke on that balloon, I did it to all of them. I selected all. Clipping masks, clipping masks. And it's time for that sound effect. Clump. So I'm switching to Fight to the Finish here. That's the name of the font. And it's time to play with letters. And I'm just making things dynamic. There's that word again. So now I'm going to use um, a little bit of perspective. It's fun to play with some perspective to try to make the sound effect look like it's sort of emanating towards you or from the source of the sound. Some outlines there. I decided to go with a lighter outline apparently. And each letter, in, in this case, I'm stacking behind the letter that preceded it. Doubling up that offset path a little bit for some weight. And now I'm checking it against the full saturation of the colors. There we go. That's better. For some reason, I don't know, that the P poking outside the panel border makes this work better for me. And I'm not someone who usually breaks panel borders all that often, but it works here. So, I think we're done. Change the page number. Save the file. Oh, checking my overprints. Got to make sure that yellow does not overprint the black, because that would be bad. Now we're going to save the file. And that's it. We're done. So let's move on to the next page. 
dropping my art in, locking it down, pasting my area type objects where they need to be. And we're going to start getting into some of these very tight spaces here. And you're going to see me play around quite a bit with my line stacking. You don't want to cover too much artwork. You want to make sure it looks intentional. You want to make sure that the reading order is preserved completely. This third balloon here, you're going to see me do this. If I stack it vertically, it doesn't read as well. So I'm going to have to stack it more horizontally, which means I have to break that panel border. And I'm not really a big fan of breaking panel borders, but you're going to see me do sort of a cool trick with the balloon later. So I'm trying to fit this up here. I don't want to cover too much of Zeitgeist's head. That's an easy one. That one fits nicely. And uh, this page is a great example of how I mentioned in the cold open about uh, Mike Allred not doing a whole lot of 90 degree panel borders and superimposing characters over panels. So this balloon has ugh at the beginning of it and you'll see me change that to italics. That's because any um, spoken sound that is not language it is generally italicized. It's one of those weird unique grammar rules of comics. And there's that foot. I'm gonna have to deal with that foot in a minute. Trying to figure out where to put this balloon. Should I put it down there? No. It's got to be there. I'm going to have to tuck it behind that foot. No, nope, can't do that. Covering too much of his head. It's got to be that. Now, see that line width change just a little bit? See the width of it shrink? That's my uh, so-called 94% line width cheat. If you have my book, The Essential Guide to Lettering, Go to page 94 and you'll learn all about that. And I'm going to have to, I'm trying not to cover the body over here with balloons because it's an important visual element. So I'm just trying to do my best to cover art that's non-essential. That's a big balloon. There's really not much choice I have there. I've got to cover artwork. So I've locked down my lettering layer and I'm dragging balloons of, you know, the approximate shapes that the, uh, the area type objects ended up being. Copying, pasting, dragging. And let's go. There's going to be a lot of clipping masks in here to make all this work because I don't like floating balloons over panels. I don't know, for me it seems, it seems too much like stickers slapped on the artwork. You gotta make it all work hand in hand. So normally I wouldn't like that third balloon in panel one to overlap that panel border, but you gotta do what you gotta do and I have a neat trick for that later. So stay tuned and see how the tops of these panels, eventually I'm going to create clipping masks to butt them against the top of the panel borders, but did you see how they didn't look quite right? They looked like a whole separate element from the artwork, and you just want to avoid that. And clipping masks and butting a balloon against a panel border can go a long way in marrying the lettering to the artwork. Now this middle panel was pretty easy, I didn't really have any constraints here. And Zeitgeist has a special balloon treatment, uh, so I'm keeping that in mind with his balloons. I'm trying to give him a little extra breathing room around them because he has a thick outline that'll be applied in a bit. And again, see if I didn't clip that balloon later on to the panel border, it would look weird. I'm doing my best here not to cover up too much of Hurt John's head. I'm gonna trim that balloon behind that foot in a little while. Now this next balloon, watch the bottom right corner. See how I almost touched that line with it in the artwork? That's called a tangent. You want to avoid a tangent. You don't want the outside lines of your balloons to kiss up against lines in the artwork because it creates a visual dissonance. And there's sort of a, an old letterer's 
joke that you fix one tangent and end up creating two more accidentally. And that's very true. So I just changed all the balloons to have their calligraphic stroke. And now uh, Zeitgeist balloons will get this cranky creature outline because he's transforming into a god. So I had to give him something sort of booming and separate from everyone else's dialogue. And now it's time to create a bunch of clipping masks. We've got to make sure these balloons butt against panel borders and look like they were intentionally placed there as part of the artwork. So that little bit right there that I'm joining to the, uh, the object that I'm going to make into a clipping mask was the cool thing that I mentioned before. See that? See now balloon two is butted against the borders, but balloon three pops out. Oh. So Zeitgeist's balloon in the next page is a little too close for comfort to balloon three in panel one. So I'm just nudging things a little bit, trying to make sure they don't collide. Reapplying that clipping mask. Making little adjustments. And there we go. So we need a clipping mask over here for these two. I'm gonna zoom in and get way in the corners of these panel borders for accuracy. And there we go with those two. Middle balloons are fine floating, no panels there. Getting into this corner. Oop, gotta cover up that tail before you apply the mask. So here I've gotta create a mask that follows the edge of that foot. I want the balloon to look like it's tucked behind there. And there we go. Not bad. Here's the balloon that almost made a tangent with a line in the artwork. And those two balloons at the bottom I'm not thrilled with. They cover too much art in my opinion, but I really had no choice. So I've changed the artwork back to its 100% color. And I'm giving it one last look before I change the page number in my title block and save the file. And with that, we're done.